Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. But you can call me Pajama Grandma. Wrapped in a cozy warm blanket today because I don't have a, a brown or green robe. I, I was fascinated. I thought, I have a lot of colored robes, but I didn't have anything that goes with brown or green. So I'm like, well, I have a brown blanket, so I'll wrap up in my cozy blanket today. Which I can hear the wind blowing outside and the chimes going off, so I know it's bitter cold. And that just makes me want to wrap up and snuggle up in my blanket even more. I forgot my slippers though. I gotta go get some slippers because when my feet are cold, all of me is cold. So what's up? What are we working on today for our transition from the offline brick and mortar world of businesses, you know, real businesses in corporate America to the online world? Well, I'm doing a women's summit, a virtual online women's summit. So I've got a couple interviews scheduled for that this morning. I got there, I think they're both this morning actually. And then I've got a couple tomorrow. I've got a lot this week because I'm catching up. Because the sim the summit, the summit goes live the end of the month, the 29th, 30th, and 31st. The summit goes live. And I will be the first to admit, I'm not ready. I've got so much to do for the summit. It's mind-boggling. And I've been putting it off and putting it off because I'm in the midst of physically moving. And when everything is in upheaval and chaos and being sorted and dealt with, it makes really... It makes it really hard to get certain things done. So I'm trying to be really strategic about when I do things and how I get them done. But I do know I should already be promoting the waiting list for the Women's Summit and getting people excited and signed up for it. And I have not created the funnel yet. I have not done the website yet. And that's got to get done. That's got to get done this. It should have been done last week, but it's got to get done like this week, today or tomorrow, if at all humanly possible. And I might have to ask for some help on that. I might have to enlist one of my buddies to help me actually create the physical funnel. I'm more than capable of doing it, but I really am stretched and struggling for time. And it's more important that I do the interviews than it is that I actually create the funnel. Oh my God, realization, delegation, got to do more of it. So I may enlist the help of one of my friends who's an awesome funnel builder to actually just do the funnel for me. And I meant to turn off my alarms because I got feedback yesterday in my videos that it's super disturbing and super disruptive. I actually made my daily scare share video twice today because I got two phone calls in it. And I'm like, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning. If people are calling me at six o'clock in the morning, I had my ringer off, but it still distracts me and it, it ruins my flow. So I just said, OK, I'm going to stop and do that one over. But here we go. Going to have to do something about my alarms. But my alarms are actually important for my life and for my functioning. I have alarms set to remind me to take supplements and medications and things that I need for my health to keep me moving forward. So if it irritates somebody because my alarm goes off in the middle of my video, should I have timed my video better? Should I edit my videos out? Well, yeah, I should do a lot of things that I don't do too. I mean, I should have calls to action on everything. I should charge people money for all the things that I do and I don't charge them for any of it. So no, I will do what's right for me. And is it, it does it bother me that the alarm goes off? Yes. Am I going to take hours to cut out that alarm sound in the video? No, because it's not going to add value. I was talking with a group yesterday. I'm in a, a group of uh, folks on LinkedIn that are doing podcasting and all kinds of different content creation. And we were talking about um, our videos and how we do them. And there's a couple of us that do like I do. We do live videos. It's live. Yesterday I was doing an interview for the Women's Summit and I was watching my granddaughter because she was sick and couldn't go to day school yesterday. So I was watching her. So she's sitting on my lap for part of that interview. Do I feel bad about that? No, because she's adorable and I love my granddaughter with all my heart. But I also want people to see that you can create content. You can do things. You can move forward with your life no matter what's going on in your life. I could use an excuse and say, okay, sorry, Joy, we're going to have to reschedule your Women's Summit interview because I've got to watch my granddaughter today. I could have done that. Would that be more professional? I guess in some people's opinion, it would. Do I care what other people think about that? No, because if that is enough to tip you over and have you not want to get the content on this amazing summit from this amazing woman, then it's your loss. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all because it's your loss. If you would use something like that. I love when people use typos or when people use the wrong word. And, and I used to be guilty of this when I was younger. I would judge people. Excuse me. I got a runny nose from hanging out with my granddaughter yesterday. Um, I would judge people on if they made typos or, or use the wrong grammar or something. And I, I will, it's because I was silly. It's silly because I wasn't listening for or reading for or watching for the intent of the message. I All I could see was what was wrong. And we're so 
conditioned to be that way. And once you stop being that way and you look for, okay, well, what's the intent? What's the message behind this? Life becomes so much more fun and so much better than if we're judging and looking for fault in other people all the time. So stop looking for fault. Stop looking for argument. Stop looking for things that give you excuses to not do what you want to do and create your life the way you want it to be. Stop looking for reasons because you'll always find plenty of reasons. You'll always find a hundred times more reasons to not do something than you will to do that thing. But if you're supposed to do that thing, you just need to do that thing anyway. What am I talking about? If you're supposed to do a women's summit, you'll find a thousand reasons not to do a women's summit. But if you know in your heart and in your gut and in your mind that you're supposed to be doing it for some reason, none of that matters. You'll just figure out how to do it. There's a very personal example. I, I don't know why I felt it compelled to do a women's summit. I have a couple little reasons, but overall, am I the most qualified person to be putting on a women's summit for women business owners? No, I'm not the least qualified, but I'm also probably by far not the most qualified. I mean, I'm sure some of the people that I'm scared to approach to be on the women's summit would say, Pooh, who are you to be doing a women's summit? I should be doing a women's summit, but you're not. And I am. So would you like to be on my summit? That's awesome. If you don't want to be because you want to be doing your own, go yeah. do your own. Yeah. And, you know, more power to you because there is more than enough room for all of us to do anything that we want on the on the planet. There really, really is. There isn't any competition except us competing against being a better version of ourselves. So today I am working on the Women's Summit. I am, from the call yesterday, I have got to pay attention to my LinkedIn profile. It is horrific, like embarrassingly bad. So I have got to write, you know, and, and I need to do this on all my social media, but LinkedIn seems to be the platform that I'm, I'm working, I'm working with right now and it's working for me. So I'm going to start there instead of thinking I, normally in the past, I would think, oh, you have to fix all of these simultaneously, which last year I thought I had to fix all of them simultaneously. And what ended up happening, I didn't fix hardly any of them. I think I did my Facebook pages, a couple, not all of them, but one or two of them, the ones that were most important and my Facebook profile. I didn't do anything else. Now I need to do my LinkedIn and who knows what will be next, but for right now it's LinkedIn. But I need to go in and clean up my profile and fix it because it's just it's just bad. It's got, I don't think it has hardly any of my professional experience or jobs in there. And I look at other people that are in this group with me and they have got these like amazing profiles. I don't even have a cover photo on my LinkedIn bio yet. All I've got is the stars one. So it's time to change that and get that going. So I'll start working on that today. I also... And moving. So that's a continuous project. If I don't keep on that, it's not going to get done. I've put it off for <clears throat> like maybe six years. I've procrastinated on that. So if you ever feel like I'm picking on you about anything, keep in mind, I have a whole lot of warts too. And I have a lot of things that I totally stink at. And I'm pretty open about that. One of them is I'm a hoarding pack rat. I save everything. And I'm trying to change that behavior with this move. I'm really, really making a concerted effort to get rid of, I said 90% of everything I own, but it's probably going to be between 80 and 90%. And I'm not counting. So it will just be my estimation of how much stuff I got rid of. The worst room I admit was my office because I am, according to my oldest sister, an office supply hoarder. I have lots of office stuff, lots of business stuff because business and office is, is my hobby and, and writing and, and creating content and things. Those are my, my, my kind of passionate hobbies. So I have a lot of stuff to contribute to those habits. And that's okay. So moving in that, um, hopefully the granddaughter is healthy today. I haven't gotten a call yet. So I'm thinking she's okay and we'll be back at school. But I am going to be watching her in February moving forward. So part of my transition will be, unless something changes, part of my transition and as I'm growing online businesses will be to demonstrate how do you do that with small children? How do you do that with a three-year-old underfoot. How do you do that as a single mom or in this case a grandma? How do you do this in helping to provide child care so you can support your kids in a way that they need help with right now and actually spend time with someone who's fantastic and adorable so it's win-win, right? But how do you build your businesses? How do you build your online businesses around that? Now, I will let you know. Last year, not last year, a couple of years ago between her 
zero and one year, her first year of her life, I was her primary caregiver while running my brick and mortar Italian food manufacturing business. So I'm pretty confident that if I can do that every day and I had set that up and systems up to make that possible, then I can certainly do it while running an online business and helping other people to do the same and coaching other people. And it's, it's, it's really flexible and it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more flexible than Italian food manufacturing was. And I need a lot less help with it than I did with Italian food manufacturing. So I'm confident that even though she's older and needs more attention now, it, she always needed a lot of attention. But you know what I mean in terms of um, maintenance and interaction and um, communication and personal development and things like that. Um, even though it's different, I think that it's still going to be awesome. And I think that I can show people some of the things that you can do to combine those things. Because there's a lot of, and I don't really work with moms at all. I've got several coaching clients that are moms, but I personally don't work with moms. So I think it's going to be good for me as well to expand my perception and my perspective on the challenges. Because it's been a long time since my kids were little. And when I, my kids were little, I was in corporate America I was married and I was running a business on the side. So it, it's different. It's a different ball game for me now as a grandma than it was as a mom. And I understand the dynamics of, hey, grandmas are cool because we can just send the kids home at the end of the day. But if you've got them all day, it's still the same as if you're a mom trying to build your business all day online. So it, there's going to be a lot of similarities there. And I think there's also a lot of grandmas that are being the primary caregivers for their kids, kids these days, for the grandchildren. And... So I think that there might be something there. Maybe there'll be something that unfolds as I move forward with that endeavor and with that experience that will lead to something else that I decide to do online. Who knows? I don't know yet. So that's what I'm working on. I actually am doing a five-day, it'll be six-day series on the money-getting recipe for supersizing your business on my Supersize Your Business page. Today was day two. That came from an idea that a, a post of, from I guess he's not a friend of mine. I, I've only talked to him once ever on the phone, but I, I love him and I follow him and I love his group. Uh, and it's uh, the science of, not, not the science of, it's getting clients without being salesy. And the gentleman's name is Landon Porter. And he put a post up that said, here's the money getting recipe. And he's a former chef. Well, he's still a chef. I guess once a chef, you're always a chef. And I love chefs because I was in the food industry for so long and I love cooking. I'm not a chef, definitely not a chef. Not that structured, but I love that he turned it into a recipe and I'm like, oh my God, I resonate so much with this. I have to share it with my Supersize Your Business folks. So I shared the recipe uh, a couple of days ago and then yesterday I shared the first ingredient and today I shared the second ingredient. I'm going to continue to share those ingredients for the next three days and how you apply those ingredients to your business. And you can use it for money getting, but you can also use it for any other resource that you need or want to grow your business or to create the business that you want because that's what supersizing your business is all about. So working on that and a whole slew of other things as usual because like most entrepreneurs, we have a lot of varied interests and we like to have our finger in a lot of different pies. So, and we know that there's an unlimited number of pies. That's it. Go out, make it a fabulous day. I'm going to sip some more of my coffee. Probably make myself some breakfast because I've been trying to eat breakfast these days. And it's oatmeal month. Did you know January is oatmeal month? And I love oatmeal. I make some of the best. I could probably do a whole cookbook on oatmeal recipes and the creative ways to eat oatmeal. Love it. Love, love, love it. But I eat it very differently than most people do. I do creative fun things with my oatmeal. That's it. Have a fabulous day. Fabulous. I'm not a fabulous person, but I like to say fabulous or fantastic or awesome. Yesterday was awesome Monday. So today is terrific Tuesday. So have a terrific day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.